The Art of Remaining Silent When is it truly better not to say anything? The truth of the matter is, many of our sages teach us that there are certain situations that come about and it's better for the person not to say um, anything hurtful or not to even correct the person, even in a nice way. Even though that may be permissible at certain times, there's just certain situations that even your remark in a calm and nice way wouldn't be helpful. In the book, The Keys to True Harmony in the Home, a project by Irgun Shirei, Hatora, Shirei Torah, we are told that sometimes it is better uh, not to voice our complaints even in a nice way. The Rambam teaches in his famous letter to his own children in Egeres Harambam, Train yourself to speak softly to everyone at all times, and through this, you will be saved from anger. This is certainly easier said than done, and each of us on our own levels, at our own pace, will be able to reach this level, God willing, at our, at our, own, uh, at our own pace. However, although it is acceptable to state your complaint softly and calmly, sometimes it is better to remain silent, since your remark Will serve, no, will serve no purpose at the present moment. In other words, let me give you an example. Let's say a wife sends her husband off to the grocery store and asks him to buy him baking soda. And he returns very happily, happy to buy you what you need. He returns with soda. And the wife immediately tells him, I just, I told you so many times to buy me baking soda and yet you still bought me the soda. Ugh, now I have to go to the store again and you really can't buy me what I need and on and on. At the moment, the husband feels very crushed and it does so much to shatter his ego. The husband does not want to look lowly and look like he's not capable of making his wife happy. It really hurt his ego, her comment. And although it's not really helping the present situation, even if she said it in a nice way, you know, honey, I told you many times to buy, you know, thank you for coming, thank you for coming um, from the store and buying what you, what, you know, making the trip to the store and buying the items. But I really asked you many times to please buy this item. And it's even though she said it in a nice way at the moment, it's not it's not purposeful at all. What is the proper thing to do instead? Um, the proper thing for her to do is to tell him the next time that he would go to the store, explicitly and specifically ask him to please buy that specific item, maybe in a text message, maybe she, writing it down, in whichever way, to be more specific and um, not, not mention the other time at all. It's not helpful, really. But this at this time, it would really be important to be more specific. Or for example, you asked your spouse to help you tidy up the kitchen. And what does he do? He tidies, tidies up the kitchen. At the same time, the spouse reorganizes your whole kitchen. Now you can't find your pots and pans. And of course, to a woman, it's very frustrating coming to the kitchen and now she can't find uh, certain items. So instead of uh, asking in such a vague way, please help me with the kitchen. Maybe she wants to be more specific, unload the dishwasher or load it, or please help me with the floors, or please help me um, organize these pots and pans or this cabinet. This way, it's more specific. And uh, in this way, we learn to ignore the wrong act because your comment at the present time will not be worthwhile. I hope this... Uh, this advice would help that I read from this amazing book, The Keys to True Harmony in the Home. Um, they also mention a beautiful story that goes along with this idea. And there's a story, a true story. The names have been changed. But we're going to, it's really a story about a spouse and his wife, a husband and, and wife. And they don't have much money. And they've been saving money to buy a new car. And they're planning to attend this car auction. And the wife, before she, you know, they leave the, to, the, to go to the auction, she tells him, please put the money uh, in your shoe. Don't put it in your pocket. He says, don't worry, honey. It's fine. It'll be okay. Let's go. Lo and behold, there is a friend that approaches him and says, you know, I suggest you check your pockets. 
And lo and behold, money is really missing from his pocket. Now he lost all of his money and all of his savings have been, they've been trying to really collect for a while. And they're going back home in the train station. And at the train station, the wife decides to talk about, you know, the weather, the kids, nothing pertaining to the money that was stolen. And the husband is dreading the moment that the wife will tell him, I told you so. She, he's dreading it. And he just could, couldn't take it anymore. And he said, Sarah, why is it that you're not telling me I told you so? You're not telling me that, you know, this is exactly what you warned me about. And she said, what will I accomplish by telling you that? And in this, with this situation, with this comment that she said, he learned that he's going to return the favor to her. He vowed to himself. A little while goes by, his brother's wedding is approaching, and they need to go to Lakewood. So they pack to Lakewood. He tells her, please don't forget my new suit. He's going to uh, wear it to the wedding and a few other things. And comes time, the day of the wedding, he asks her, honey, where's my new suit? And she says, I'm really, really sorry. I left your new suit at home. I um, was trying to get the kids together, and it was really a busy time. I'm really, really sorry, and she was really apologetic. Yes, he was annoyed. Yes, he was frustrated. But he told himself, I vow to return this favor to her, and she is a true Eshet Chayo. Soon she told her children, look what a tzaddik your father is. I left his new suit at home, and he graciously forgave me, and he will er wear his old shabby suit to his own brother's wedding. What a tzaddik that he is. May we merit to be silent at the right moment, and may this easy be easy for us to accomplish. Amen. Have a wonderful day. Leah Abramov, Being and Becoming.